Hi, Achim Schlüssel, Inner Space Explorers. Today I will talk to you a little bit about the um, Sea Life DC 2000. Um, most of you know that I do a lot of underwater photography for our own publications, for, for magazines, books, whatever. And um, usually I work with an SLR, uh, in fact, a um, uh, Canon. Um, EOS 5 Mark II and a Hoogieford housing, two big strobes, nice setup. The problem is uh, with today's requirements from the airlines when you travel, um, weight limitations, it became a real pain to travel with this because it's like 28 kilos. So uh, when the opportunity came to check out the DC 2000, I gladly accepted it and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a review today. So the very first thing I have to say, unfortunately, is a huge complaint. When I unpacked it, I had like 50 plastic bags in my hands. Every single little component was packed in an individual plastic bag. So um, Sea Life belonging to Johnson Outdoor, Scuba Pro, as a diving company, um, everybody's talking about environmental protection, too much plastic in our, in our oceans and stuff. I cannot understand how a company like that can can stick to this concept. I mean, you could wrap all of this in paper, for example, and it would be it would be great. You can you can uh, be a great example, and um, so that I found pretty annoying. But let's talk about the camera itself. The nice thing is, uh, compared to my 28 kilo box that I usually have with me right now, everything. Um, was transportable in a regulator bag, which means in my hand luggage without any issues. So the first thing we have, like the, the main thing, is the camera itself. You see, very small, very nice. Actually, it feels quite, um, quite solid. It's an aluminum housing, it's a big display. And the camera itself is watertight um, down, to, down to, I think, 10 meters. Um, yes. Yes, no, 18 meters, um, even better. So you can, for example, go snorkeling with this without any issues, which I think is a great feature. Also, I mean, if you're on the boat, you open the case, you take this one out, it gets a, gets a splash, nothing will happen. So that's awesome. So the next thing is the housing, which allows you to take it down to 60 meters. It's a polycarbonate housing with like a rubber coating, so it feels quite good. You have a solid grip on it. The buttons are all quite big. You can even uh, handle this good with, with thick gloves. Um, very nice, you don't have to, to use tools or, or screw it down in the housing. You simply plop it in, it sits really nice. You have one big O-ring that is easy to take care of. Um, the ceiling surface is also very visible. It's very easy to see if everything's fine. You close this and lock it down. All good. And again, as the camera itself is watertight, even if there gets a drop of water inside, usually it's not gonna, gonna hurt the camera. All right, so while this is uh, already good to go, I decided, of course, to use a tray. So I mounted it on this one. It's a uh, Sea Life tray as well. So I screw the tray on. I have a bolt snap on this one so I can put it on my gear. I have two handles. And already this is a setup that I can handle quite nice and um, reach all the knobs quite comfortable. So I decided to take two flexible arms on each side, which allows me uh, to be a little bit more um, flexible when it comes to lightning. And instead of strobes, I use the um, sea life dragon light 2500 so 2500 lumen each which gives you plenty of light um, so you see i have um, if i do wide angle i can have it like this i can really take it out but if i do for example macro it's also very easy to adjust those and put them the way you want it and as a little goodie there we have a fish eye lens, um, also good quality glass, no plastic, and uh, this is watertight by itself. So what you do in fact, you can either 
put it on the tray so you have it with you on the dive and if you need it you remove it the uh, gap between the lenses is filled with water and you just put it on and you're ready to go so very nice setup that's all you need um, and uh, from super macro to wide angle you can do everything and it makes really nice videos in fact some of the videos on our channel that you've seen on the last couple of days have been recorded with this so now let's talk about um, the quality in the end of this video you will see a couple of shots that i did in the last few days with this camera so it gives you a little bit idea of the quality and um, generally i'm quite happy with it um, the, the only thing I was not too happy with was the, was the autofocus. It's, um, you really have to get used to the, the field of depth that it, it produces. So especially doing uh, macro photography, close-up photography, um, the camera gives you an indication with a green or red light if you're in focus or not. So like focusing on the eyes of a, of, of a crab or something like that. Um, you think you're in focus, you take the picture and afterwards you figure the, the field of depth was not enough. So you really, it takes you a couple of shots to figure out where it sits and what you can do with it. But I mean, if you use it a lot of times, it's not an issue. The big question is, is it a real um, permanent alternative to an SLR? I would say no. I mean, the SLR gives you, of course, more opportunities. Um, you can have different lenses, um, the manual mode is for sure um, allowing you a, a lot of, of more different settings that you um, have a hard time doing with this camera. Is it something that you can take instead of an SLR in case you have weight limitations or space limitations on your travel? Yes, absolutely. So for me, traveling to um, remote locations, having a lot of, of gear with me and, and not knowing where to put my SLR or I'm really afraid that it is get damaged or broken or whatever, this is a great alternative. It's a, it's a um, great way to, to do great pictures and videos without having the huge SLR with me. Something I would uh, really like to see with it is the opportunity to connect a real strobe so there is a strobe available for it, but it works with the fiberglass cable. So the internal strobe goes in the fiberglass cable and triggers the strobe. I'm not too convinced with that. And the power of the strobe is also not what I'm used to. So that might be me, but especially if you use the fisheye lens and um, there is a little bit of, of way for the light to travel through the water, the opportunity to connect the real strobe would be awesome. And just taking the small camera setup but getting a real strobe would, in my opinion, be a huge benefit. Anyway, there's a clear recommendation for that. Uh, check out the pictures that I show you now that give you a bit, little bit of an idea. And then if you have a chance, go and test it. You'll like it. I hope you liked that video. Um, if so, please subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook and I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.